All right, folks, today's an exciting day. Welcome back to the channel. I am about to install a set of awesome, well, what I hope will be awesome, rear sets on my Aprilia RSV4 2021 factory. And these are the Giamoto rear sets. Now, we're gonna open the box in a minute, but I have the stock rear sets on my bike. Uh, it's not always been like that. I removed the stock rear sets and I installed a set from another manufacturer who shall be unnamed at this point. And while the shifter side was fine and I installed it with no problems, I just had a lot of trouble with the brake side. Couldn't understand the instructions. Uh, the diagrams were next to useless. Uh, there was a part list, but the description was missing. And so I never knew what screw was going where and what bolt was going where. I couldn't figure out uh, if or how the brake lever sp return spring was going to be installed. And I couldn't figure out if or how or whether uh, the brake switch uh, was going to be installed. So I just gave up in frustration. Uh, lost a bit of money on that, unfortunately. But I've got a set of uh, rear sets from Giamoto. Um, and I'm hoping it's going to work out. I bought this from AF1 Racing and I got to tell you service and shipment was super fast. I ordered them yesterday, literally like 10 a.m. or something like that. And the UPS guy just delivered it to me today and it's about noon. So I hope to install this uh, today and the timing is perfect because tomorrow I am coaching. So let's open the box and see what's inside. It's got a nice Italian tricolored sticker with Giamoto. I like this photograph. That makes things much easier. Got the diagram on how these things fit together. And here's what I like. It's got item number, part number, description, and quantity. So I know exactly what I'm dealing with. Cool, cool, cool. Shipping information, invoice, and wow, neatly packaged. I've already run into an issue um, so actually two issues number one is that uh, this toe peg um, sits on a little sliding thing that allows you to shift this around I guess and that's kind of different from what what it is over here um, this is the toe peg that uh, attaches like so with a bolt down here that part is fine, but over here it has a little uh, plate, and that plate I don't see. So that's my first problem that I need to figure out. And then the second problem is this um, foot, reg, uh, foot peg. The foot peg here is fixed, uh, but what I have here is a folding foot peg. One of the reasons I wanted to switch from the stock um, foot peg which is also a folding foot peg is uh, yeah my legs kept kind of folding this up I wanted this to be fixed so I don't know where the miscommunication was um, the diagram over here suddenly makes it look like it should be a fixed foot peg and what I have is a folding foot peg all right so far two issues mm, we'll keep going and see where we are at the end of this installation. All right, another thing I didn't realize I was getting is that the toe peg is also a folding toe peg. I don't know if you can see this, but it kind of folds. And again, the diagram, it makes it look like it's a fixed toe peg. So I don't know where I went wrong on this. 
but so I've already got three issues. Um, all right, well, I'm going to go ahead and install the um, uh, gear shift uh, rod, and I'm going to try to set it about the same length as it is in stock position because this is uh, is a pretty good position for me. So I'm going to try to set it about the same length. We'll see how that works, but that's the general idea. I don't know, maybe that's about right. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and remove these two bolts um, and then basically pull out the stock assembly and then come back in and install this. Um, I'll tell you if I need to use the stock bolts or uh, something that they provided. I have a feeling that I'll be using the stock bolts. All right, you need a six millimeter uh, bolt to remove these two screws. So let's go ahead and do it. So once those bolts have been removed, you need a couple of uh, 10 millimeter wrenches to uh, unbolt the the rod, the shift rod. So that's the stock piece. Put it away somewhere, keep it nice and safe. Looks like we're gonna go ahead and remove this as well. All right, I actually had to use a 17 millimeter wrench to hold this in place before I could unscrew this with a 10 millimeter. And then it's pretty easy to take it out. All right. All right, one other thing that needs to be done is this uh, screw needs to be taken out and um, there's a spacer here and the kit comes with a different spacer. That spacer is a little wider. So I have a feeling that uh, the reason they're asking you to change the spacer is that it moves the entire shift rod out a little bit and it doesn't hit against the frame. That's probably the reason. So let's go ahead and take so uh, this screw out and uh, remove that spacer over there. This thing is a little tight, so you're gonna to have to go in and wrestle with it. Um, so you might wanna keep this fastened, and then that gives you some leverage, and then um, take it out. So once it breaks loose, then it's pretty easy to uh, for it to come out all the way. And you gotta watch out, there are a couple of O-rings there, so we wanna leave the o-rings in that same sort of location all right so it goes in like that and then the bolt does get replaced so i'm going to pull the bolt out and put a little bit of loctite before i stick the bolt back in So Loctite, there we go, and a little bit of that, there we go, okay, and then uh, now it's how did I put this in, so that's that, this goes in here, so that goes in there, okay, there we go.
Now we've got to thread these two in. This goes in the front. Just want to get this started. All right, so the uh, rear sets have been installed and the push rod has been adjusted. I've tried to keep this at a 90 degree angle and so I had to remove this little bolt over here to make the adjustment. But it turned out that I put it back at the stock position. I would marked it before I moved it and that seems to be just about right. I then tightened up these two nuts over here so I think the shifting accent should be nice and precise but of course I'd have to go to the track to find out exactly how this is uh, going to work out for me. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of what it looks like. And I got to tell you, I like the green and the silver and the red. Now, one thing I did for my previous uh, stock position is that I measured the height from the top of the foot peg. So right there to the um, right here. And that's about 18.1 inch or 18.2 inches. And that's exactly what my stock uh, shifter was. So this is back in the stock position. Um, and again, this, you know, your mileage might vary, but I've got this with uh, the rear stand. So that's how I'm measuring it. So that's a constant between the two um, uh, rear sets. So yeah, uh, looks like I'm all set as far as uh, the shifter side is concerned and okay i'm not sure how well you can see this but we're still on the um, gear side and then the bolt over here which is the oem bolt uh, goes right through the frame and it's about to touch the chain on the back and that about bothers me because if this chain ever kind of gets stuck on that i am in deep shit so I'm going to put a small washer right there, like a lock washer. So I'm going to remove these two bolts, put a small lock washer. And so that's going to move this bolt out a little bit and keep it from getting entangled in the chain. I don't know if it's ever happened before, but I just don't want to be the first one to find out. And so basically these are the two washers that I'm going to use. They're both lock washers, so it should help with the keeping the bolts nice and fastened. Uh, of course, I will use uh, Loctite on top of this on the bolts. All right, so I installed these with a couple of washers, one up there and one down here. I'm not sure if you can see the washer. You can probably just see the tip of it. But one thing that's happened is the bolt that's sticking out over there, it's not as far. So I've got a little bit more gap between the back of the bolt and the chain. All right, we are on the brake side. I'm going to remove this uh, first and release the uh, master cylinder because this thing tends to be um, tightened up pretty good. So I'm going to open these two before I get to these two bolts. So let's do that. All right, uh, that releases the master cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and remove the big bolts. There we go. Wow, that's pretty tight. There we go. Not as strong as my wrists. Ha ha ha. To release this plunger over here so there we go I think comes off pretty easy that's the plunger 
and its bracket. Holds it in place. Uh, There's a brake switch that needs to come off. I believe the brake switch um, gets reused. So I think I need a three millimeter or four millimeter for this. It is three millimeters. So that releases the brake switch. We're going to reuse that. I'm going to also have to release that spring, the brake return spring, the brake lever return spring. Grab some pliers. And let's see how I want to do this. Okay, I should be able to. There we go. Comes right off. I'm gonna use this or reuse that. Oh, whoa, whoa. Things have fallen. I better find it, otherwise, I never will. All right. Okay, so this is the stock stuff, and I don't think I need that. this uh, let's see I'm gonna have to figure this out and get back all right so I'm looking at the diagram over here and uh, I'm trying to match it with the, the, the brake side and I'm trying to figure out where the spring goes I know I do need to remove the the rubber sleeve so let's just go ahead and do that first so one goes here and the other one obviously it goes here somewhere but I don't see that they provided a nut for that so I assume I have to uh, take the nut out of the OEM um, and then install it here I'm assuming that's what needs to be done so let's do that okay so I'm taking out the uh, nut it's an eight millimeter nut out of the OEM uh, Unless I'm missing something. I don't think I am. So, looks like it's got a bit of Loctite. So, I'll read Loctite. I'm assuming this fits in. Uh, yeah. Oh, it doesn't. Yeah, it's a perfect fit. So, a little bit of Loctite, and looks like I get to reuse this bolt. Okay, it wasn't too bad, but did not know I would have to reuse that. All right, so I guess that means these two go in here. Okay, I can handle that. I guess I just go ahead and... No, I don't want to fix that now because I need to install the brake which I also need to figure out where this goes. Okay, so this goes... Oh, okay, it goes in here, like so. Alright. That's what's going to have to happen. I reuse the plunger, but then I use this bolt, so... Let's get that out. That's one of those. Mm, okay. Maybe just regular pliers. Like this one. There we go. That came out. Okay. All right. So. This goes, it doesn't matter which way. 
Oh, great, this doesn't come out. Come on. Okay. And it goes and then I'm gonna put this back in. Cannot do not make this fly out. And don't puncture your thumb. Come on, almost there. Is it there? It is there. Hey in. Is it, is it not in? I'm gonna say that's in. All right, that was not too bad. All right, that was not too bad. No, I believe this goes right back into this. Okay, so this installs like so. Okay. This I guess it goes into this one here. I've got to be uh, do I have the wrong That's that. And so now I just gotta make sure. I think that will work. Right stick kind of stud over there so that needs to go inside okay now if the brake lever is pressed the switch you can hear perfect so now it's time for the spring let's get that spring back you have the pliers There's a long side and a short side. This is long, that's short. I don't remember which side is what. I'm gonna go with the long side on top and the short side over here and hope that that is correct. All right, now pull it over. Slide it in. Okay, that is that. So now what I think that should work. Alright, there we go. Now the bolt is upright, uh the plunger is upright. So we are in good shape. Mm -hmm. All right, so basically we are all but done on the brake side. Um, I fastened these two bolts. The brake uh, plunger over here is going right into the master cylinder. I want to test the brake by doing this and making sure that the brake lever is working, which it is. I installed this little tip for 
the foot peg rest and now all I've got to do is install the foot rest and where is the foot rest here it is we're going to use the bolts that have been provided I do not want to put Loctite here at this point because I might have to move this around but I'm going to match the all right I run out of my GoPro battery so I've turned on my iPhone but here's basically the finished product uh, install the, uh, the footrest I went with the lowest forward most position and we'll make those adjustments later on but everything seems to be in good shape there's the brake lever here's the wheels moving without any problems so I know the brakes are not uh, dragging but then when I do use the brakes like so it is stopping so we're good there gosh the green red and silver just looks fantastic